Hi everyone, let's continue our discussion of the Sommerfeld model. Remember, we're on our way toward calculating the specific heat of the free electron gas. And in order to do that, we need to compute the total energy of the system. Uh, and we also need to make sure that our distribution function is properly normalized such that the integral of G times F, where remember G is the density of states, is equal to the total density of electrons in the system. So this form of these integrals is a little bit different than how we started. We've gone from case space to energy space, and we introduced the concept of the density of states. So now we're faced with computing integrals of the form some function h of the energy times the distribution function uh, f. And we're gonna make some headway by making a rather involved set of approximations uh, for this integrand here. Uh, the basic idea behind all of these approximations, this is called the Sommerfeld expansion, is to realize that at t equals zero, the Fermi-Dirac distribution looks like this. It's a step function. Where the distribution is one for energies less than the chemical potential and zero for energies greater than the chemical potential. Uh, when T increases from zero, this sharp step smooths out a little bit and it looks something like this. So this is for temperatures uh, significantly less than the chemical potential divided by Kb, but still larger than zero. Uh, the idea is to see that F differs from its T equals zero form only in a small region uh, around mu, around E equals mu. Uh, the characteristic width of this region is of order uh, Kbt. So what we're going to do is to uh, expand this integrand in particular h around e equals mu. And this will let us uh, make some headway in writing down a general form for these equations. So let's start by defining a new function k as the integral of h. Remember the integral we're trying to compute, the general form of the integral we're trying to compute is h times f. So if I define k as the integral of h, uh, you can clearly see that h is the derivative of k. Now let's integrate the expression we care about by parts. So the thing we care about is the integral of h times f. This is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of k times minus dfde. And we got this by, again, using the product rule. So let me just use a shorthand to indicate that the derivative of k times f is equal to k times the derivative of f plus the derivative of k times f. Uh, the thing that we care about is the integral of h times f, uh, which is uh, this term here. Um, so this is equal to the derivative of kf minus kdf, which is what we've written here. Uh, the integral uh, that results from this boundary term here vanishes. Uh, 
because f at infinity is equal to zero and k at zero is also equal to zero. Okay, so we've, we've now made a little bit of progress. Uh, we've taken this step here. Um, let's look at what, what DFDE looks like. So let me plot minus DFDE. Uh, so this looks like a function that's peaked about E equals mu and the width of this peak is KBT. So now the idea is uh, provided that H and K, these, function these functions which are related to each other, don't vary too much when E is equal to mu, we can tailor expand them about E equals mu. So, Let's do that. So let's expand k about k about e equals mu. Again, the whole reason we're doing this is that we showed that the integral of h times f can be written as the integral of k times minus dfde. Minus dfde is really non-zero only in the rather small region around e equals mu. Uh, so knowing that, we feel free to tailor expand k around its value uh, at, at e equals mu. Okay, so uh, what we're now gonna do is substitute in our expression uh, for Uh, we're going to substitute this expression for, uh, for k back into the integral. And we'll see what we get. Uh, so the first term that we have to think about is the integral of k of k at mu against minus dfde. But the first term is going to purely give us k at mu. Since the integral of minus dfde from minus infinity to infinity gives us one. So that's one, simpl one simplification that we can make. The other thing to note is that this function, f prime of e, is even about e equals mu. Uh, so only the even derivatives uh, of k will appear um, in our expansion. So let's see where we stand. So the integral that we want to compute is the integral of h times f from minus infinity to infinity. The first term uh, is just uh, k of mu, k evaluated at mu, but remembering the relationship between h and k, that's the same thing as the integral from minus infinity to mu of h. Now, we need to add the additional terms in the expansion. Now I'm keeping only the even terms. Okay, so uh, we've, we've, we've substituted our expression uh, for k into um, the, the simplification of this integral that we wrote down. Uh, we've then introduced again back 
our uh, the relationship between H and K. Um, again, we're, we're sort of going to these seemingly strange lengths here uh, uh, to justify and to make some simplifications based on the fact that really the only thing that is happening differently at t greater than zero when you think about t equals zero happens near the chemical potential. So we're expanding uh, the integrand about E equals uh, mu here. So we can make a further simplification by setting E minus mu over KVT to some variable called X. Then the integral that we want which is h times f is equal to the first time for the first term the integral from minus infinity to mu of of h itself plus higher order terms So uh, I've written this expansion now in terms of these constants a n. I'll show you what they are on the next screen here. Uh, this is called the Sommerfeld expansion. And um, this is this, this is a prescription for how to compute integrals of this form. And uh, typically we write most of the things we care about in this way. And using this expansion, we can compute the answer to uh, higher and higher um, degrees of precision. Um, you can kind of convince yourself that uh, this is a series that will converge. Uh, each term looks like uh, uh, e e the term of corresponding to um, uh, index n in this sum is roughly of order kbt over mu uh, all raised to the power 2n. And again, for typical temperatures that we care about, the temperature is significantly less than the chemical potential. Uh, so that's why this is a series that, that one expects to converge. Now, these constants a, have a form that's not too surprising. And believe it or not, you can compute exactly what these coefficients a n are. So if we keep only the first few terms in this sum, finally we have the object that we care about, the integral of h times f, that is equal to first term plus, now let's include uh, the first term in the sum. Here's the second term in the sum. Plus higher order terms. So this is a very common form of the Sommerfeld expansion. Usually it's not necessary uh, for the temperatures one is most often interested in to go uh, beyond this order. So in the next mini lecture, we'll finally use this to compute uh, the specific heat of the free electron gas in the Sommerfeld model.